Hello tipsters and tricksters, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another vintage tips and tricks video. If you're new to the channel, welcome, I'm B, and if you like what you see and you feel like sticking around, don't forget to subscribe and click that little notification bell so you know when my videos come out. So as the title suggests, today's video is going to be a huge vintage haul. I recently came back from Australia and whilst I was there I visited my grandmother who told me to go and have a look in a wardrobe in her house that was filled with pieces that belonged to her, her mother-in-law and her mother and that I could take anything that caught my eye. I may have had to buy an entire another piece of luggage and pay 100 Australian dollars to bring it all back to the UK. But that said, most of the pieces are from the 30s, 40s and 70s. The 30s pieces in particular, if I had bought them new, would have cost me many, 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 many times more than what I paid in extra luggage fees and shipping. So I'm figuring that's a win. So as you can see, I have said piece of luggage, my suitcase, this is in no particular order. I've just opened this after my trip. One of the things that I found in her wardrobe was a bunch of 70s does 40s style shirts. So it's got like the balloon like sleeves, the pointed collar, and very cute little covered buttons. It is absolutely covered in stains. I'm gonna try washing them out, but I have a thing with vintage where a lot of my vintage stuff has some pretty bad wear and tear. And I kind of see it as part of the charm. I know some people only collect vintage if it's in perfect condition, but for me, like this has got lipstick stains on it, like lots of little moth holes and other like coffee stains and things. And I still think it's absolutely beautiful. That's just me. Here is another 70s does 40s shirt in like a vermilion color. Again, with that daggered collar, this one has massive bell sleeves and then a long buttoned cuff like so. I have been going through a phase of late of wearing more 70s style stuff but when I go back to the 40s I can also mix this in as well so it's going to be very versatile. I'm not sure how I'll dress it up for this video, I guess you guys will see in the cutaway but yeah I can see myself getting a lot of wear out of these even if they are stained like I really don't care. My grandma let me have a whole bunch of cherished scarves that she bought in the 1950s and have like very special designs on them. This one has like a Spanish bullfighter theme to it so as you can see it has all of the bullfighters around the outside and the writing on it is in Spanish as well so yeah that one's pretty special I'm quite excited to style that up with something I think I'll probably go pretty simple like maybe a black and white outfit or just an all white outfit maybe and then make this the, the centerpiece of that the next one is this amazing 1950s scarf that has musicians all over it and little music notes. Like how cute is that? Again, it's in shocking condition, but I can style it in a way that you will never see that it has tears in it. That's just about the way that I tie it, but just it was too sweet, the pattern on it, and it's too unusual for me to pass up. I just love it. Then I took a couple of these 70s style headscarves, 60s, 70s style headscarves. Leaning close, you can see the pattern on them. I'm just going to style those up with various things. I won't necessarily do a cutaway with these on. I will probably just show the clothing as a cutaway. But if any of you guys are interested in seeing me wearing these items, you can always follow my Instagram if you like. That's where I tend to style things up and really showcase my outfits and how I utilize different pieces in different ways. So check it out. These scarves are so beautiful. They're from the 1930s. They are absolutely amazing. I'm probably going to take... They've got these ribbons that... Um, my grandma, I think, sewed onto them at some point, but I'm probably going to take those off. But, like, look at this pattern. Isn't that absolutely stunning? I'm going to try to get it not to focus on my face. Hopefully it's focusing for you guys. Check out the pattern on this, and it's even got, like, an embossed pattern as well, or rather sewn in. And then this amazing fringe detail. It's totally beautiful and almost like a bit psychedelic even though it's from the 1930s or maybe even the 1920s my grandma was saying. I believe it belonged to her mother so that's pretty special. And it has a matching one in blue that's in pretty bad condition like the, um, the fringing along the side is all coming off. But it's still absolutely gorgeous. So there's that one absolutely beautiful. So that needs a little bit of tender love and care but I will try repairing those or maybe see if I can find someone who can repair them for me. Like maybe Nana of Splendid Stitches. The last one of the scarves that I picked up is this beautiful 1940s one. Oops, I'll flip it around this way. 
again with that kind of like psychedelic pattern all over it or like impressionism almost and if I come in really close hopefully you guys can see that the stitching along the edge here is just so neat and beautiful it's actually one of my favorite parts of it I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it but it's just so beautifully finished that I've never seen a scarf that is made and finished as nicely as this because it is around the edge. It's not printed, it's just a completely different material that's been sewn on and it's this beautiful light chiffon material so I can't wait to put that on. <laughs> this one here is an amazing 1950s jacket with a huge collar, an amazing gold lining inside and these great big cuffs on it. It's just absolutely stunning and I'll bring it up close so that you can see. Look at the material, it is absolutely beautiful. This is just my ideal jacket. This is the kind of thing that I absolutely love wearing just out to dinner or yeah, you don't have to have a special occasion for me to be getting dressed up in this kind of piece. This is like the kind of thing that I love to have in my staple wardrobe. I have a lot of stuff that I love to kind of dress up of the era and challenge myself but in terms of like everyday not everyday wear but in terms of my personal style these kind of pieces really really are my jam this era this kind of style is very like classic chic absolutely beautiful and totally totally my thing now this one actually belonged to my grandma she told me a story about how she would go dancing in this dress, swing dancing. It has these amazing pleats in it so that when she spun, the skirt lifted up and you could see the different colours. But she did tell me that the next day after the dance, she would walk down the street through the local area and all the boys would ask her if she still had that beautiful blue dress that showed off her legs. So, hello! I really hope it fits. It look, does look quite tiny, but it's just very beautiful and it's got this cute little pocket detail. It does have some wear and tear, it's got a tear along the back here that needs fixing. It's well loved but because it was my grandma's it's got a special place in my heart and I'm really excited to wear it and pay homage to her. And I might have to go for a dance in it, see how it uh, holds up to the story. At the bottom of the wardrobe I found this piece lying on the floor, it had fallen off of its hanger and so it's very dusty and dirty and got quite a few like pools and things in it. It's not actually torn but it has moth holes and pools but the colour is divine. I'm not sure how it's going to show up on camera but it is like a real jade green. It's probably more blue on camera but actually it's very green and it's absolutely stunning. Look at the bow detail on it at the front here. It's got little gatherings over the shoulder and shoulder pads. It is a true 1930s gown. It's press studded all down the side and then an amazing long fluted skirt. It is really really pretty and I'm just really really hoping this fits me because a lot of this stuff I didn't get to try on before I brought it back with me so please please let this fit me I have to do a lot of work on it to bring it up to wearable condition but it's just so pretty I just realized I'm actually wearing one of the pieces and I haven't even mentioned it so it's this uh, robe it's got amazing embroidery detail all over it it has so many stains and holes in it but it is so so pretty like look at the the tie with the little tassel detail it is just so beautiful now I mentioned some of the pieces were 1970s pieces these were my aunties and one of them was this amazing leather vest with tassels like super super long tassels they're all knotted here we go how cool is that? As many of you know, if you've been following me recently, I've been going through a 60s and 70s phase, so this is definitely going to get some wear, but check out the little details. Like, actually, I think one of the tassels has fallen off of the boobs, but it has, like, a little, like, tassel over the, over the boobage area. So cute. Tassels on the shoulder. I cannot wait to wear this to, I don't know, a concert or something. I think it's going to look super cool and I love that it is like a bright purple colour. That's just very, very rock and roll. Apparently, this is actually a 1980s dress, as my grandma told me, but it is so, and you can tell by the label and stuff actually. Oh, it's by Q. They're a brand that still exists, so there you go. It is a beautiful true fuchsia, I think it looks more maroon on camera, but it's like a true fuchsia uh, 40s style dress with the collarless collar. <laughs> 
and the little darted neckline and then slightly puffed sleeves with the little button detail on it there. They look like the little like jujube lollies, the raspberry lollies that we had in Australia. That's what the buttons look like. Very sweet. And then it has a matching belt like this again, very 40s in the same color as the dress. Honestly, once it's on, it really does look like a 40s dress. You can't tell that it's an 80s dress and I'm someone who really isn't a fan of 80s does 40s, but this piece is, is really lovely and I was quite pleased to find this one in the wardrobe. Now, this one I actually wore the other day at London Edge with bow and crossbones. I needed a 40s dress and I wanted something floral and this was the only thing I had. It is actually a 1930s dress and it is very sheer as you can see. Look at that beautiful detail in the material. So many different colours. It has a matching material belt to go with it. But one of my favourite things is things like the rouging. So this is the underside of the sleeve. So if I come in close hopefully you can see it has rouging under the sleeve to gather it really nicely and then on the top it has rouging again. I mean, I'm probably using the wrong words. I'm not a sewer. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I'm absolutely butchering the sewing terms, but these little details are what really make 1930s pieces seem like 1930s pieces. It is a little bit big on me so it doesn't fit quite the way it's supposed to, but it still looks really beautiful and I'm still gonna get plenty of wear out of it. Another 1930s beauty. I love the coloring of this. It is so autumnal and just the little tuxedo details on it, like it's got a bow along the front. The sleeves are ever so slightly belled, even though they're short. And then the way that it has been cut, again, I shall bring it up close. Hopefully you can see the way the material has been cut just makes it sit absolutely beautifully. You can see the V on it and then the the two panels that come down the center and kind of hug the hips and bring it in around the knees just makes the shape of it so stunning and so, so 1930s. Getting to know different pieces, the way that they were cut, what materials they were made from and the general silhouette is really gonna help you find true vintage pieces in stores because so often owners of thrift stores have no idea what era the pieces are from. So if you can spot a gem in amongst the junk, it is well, well worth spending the time getting to know your stuff. So that is my tip for you. I got several jackets. This cute little 1940s one. Look at the lining of this. Just on its own, the lining is so gorgeous. It's something that you don't see on modern clothing and opening your jacket and having the most stunning lining is just such a beautiful feature of so many vintage pieces. And little finishing things like the buckle here, that's all diamantes. I can get it to stop focusing on my face. There we go. It is missing a diamante, but again, just think of those little things are actually quite endearing, really. <laughs> I love that it has this kind of half bow to do up the jacket, and then this amazing collar that I'm still trying to work out how you... <coughs> so dusty. It has this amazing collar that I'm still trying to work out how to do up. I'll show you in the cutaway what I end up doing, but... Yeah, it's very cute. It's obviously supposed to like go into the collar, which is like opened at the back. So there's some sort of trick to it that I'm going to have to work out. But yes, we shall see what I do with this one. My allergies are going mental. We're getting there, guys. I'm slowly making my way through. This video is going to be massive. Okay, finally, a true 1940s piece. It's black, so it's going to be hard to show on camera. But if I can get this to sit up again, slightly tuxedo themed. It's got the sequins along the neckline here. It has the most amazing sleeves, again, gathered underneath so that it sits really beautifully around the elbow and then it comes into these pointed sleeves. So pretty and they actually do up around the wrist so that they sit really tight. So you've got like the billow at the elbow and then it's really tapered at the sleeve. So very, very pretty. Some of these pieces are a little bit big for me, so we'll see how they look on, but I tend to find with 40s, I don't mind if they fit a bit big. And because of the make do and mend mentality of the 40s, a lot of women didn't go out and purchase new stuff just to make sure it fit them. They would take things in, let things out, or sometimes they would just put a belt on and bear with it until they put some weight back on again. So it's not inauthentic. That one actually comes with a beautiful little art deco style belt. Whoops. Here, I'll hold it up close so you can see the buckle 
very, very pretty. Yet another beautiful 1930s dress. Again, with really unusual material. So it's actually done in two parts. It's got like, it's all sewn together, but it has almost like this little jacket style or vest style over the top of it. It's got lacing here. This is just a panel that is sewn in. And then the most amazing like floral leafy design print all over it. Really, really sweet in very autumnal colors. And then these lacy extra panels to the wrists, which only peek through so you actually do up the cuff which sits really really tight and then this peeks out from the cuff so beautiful really really cute and unusual and again that beautiful 1930s cut where it's all darted and then it has little pleats down the bottom of the skirt as well so I really really hope this fits me and I cannot wait to wear it out to something special in springtime. All these 1930s pieces are super, super lightweight and sheer, so I'm gonna have to wait until warmer weather to wear it unless I can find a way to seriously layer up underneath, but yes, we shall see how soon I actually get some wear out of these. Another 1970s piece. This caught my eye because I feel like you can take something really simple and pop this over the top. It's a little chiffon cape, and you're gonna get quite a 30s or 70s vibe depending on what you pair it with. It would definitely work for the 1930s and I think look very cute and floaty, but you can also obviously do 1970s because that's the era that it's from. You just pop it on with the hook and eye that is on the back and I really love that it has the different color stitching all around the side to give it that just really pretty point of difference. This is probably something I'm gonna wear quite soon and dress up with a 70s kind of look. Or maybe a 30s look, I don't know. I've done my hair and makeup 30s today and now I'm feeling like I'm gonna go back into that era again. I tend to like fall down these like tunnels of interest. I get very tunnel vision on like one era and I'll do that for a while and then I'll switch back to another one. Does anyone else do that? Just get fixated for a while and then come back to the things that they're really used to doing like the 40s and 50s. Mine's like the 30s, 40s and 50s but I do like to branch out sometimes, it's just fun. This really, really caught my eye. It is a 1930s pajama set made in satin, but it has the most amazing embroidery on it. Check that out. How stunning is that? All along the bottom on both cuffs. I have to replace the elastic because it's completely gone, but it is supposed to cinch in, so it is supposed to be quite baggy because the top is a little bolero. Where is the top? Where did it go? So here is the top. Like I said, everything is super wrinkly, so I'm gonna have to steam it all because it's been jammed in a suitcase. But here is the very cute matching bolero with the cute little like cinched in sleeves with the embroidery and then this amazing bit of embroidery on the back. I'll definitely be getting some house lounge wear out of this, that's for sure. This is something that I've actually been looking for for a really, really long time, and I did have another amazing 1930s pajama set from my other grandma that disappeared. I swear I gave it to my mom to hang on to it when I left Australia, but it has vamoosed, so I'm hoping maybe it's hiding in a box at her house somewhere. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this piece, but it is a 1970s dress. And it's inside out. Again, this is one that needs elastic and stuff replaced. So it's supposed to have like a high collar that sits up. All the elastic is going on it and it has quite a big tear in it. So it kind of sits frilly like at the moment, but I don't really care. It is a smock design. If I come in nice and close, you should be able to see. And I just love the cute little spring flowers all over it. It is adorable. Again, it's supposed to have tight little sleeves with elastic in it, but all the elastic is gone. So gonna have to get that redone somehow. It's not my thing, so I probably have to take that to Nana as well. Then along the bottom it has the ruffled hemline, so... I could cinch it in with a belt, but I've just been wearing it floaty with my knee-high leather boots, and I just thought that looked very 70s and bohemian, so... Yeah. So part of me is like a bit embarrassed that I brought this back with me. And it is an amazing 1930s wedding dress. It is in terrible condition. It's been all draped through the mud on wedding day. But it's just so pretty. Look at all of that detail. How amazing is that? Buttons on the top. All this gathering pintux. Is that pintux? I'm not really sure what it's called. but And this amazing huge long skirt with a train. I don't even know if I want to get married. Like Val and I are both very conflicted about the idea of marriage. And if we did get married, it would probably be 
to make things official because we can't live in France unless we're married because they only take you seriously as a couple if you're married or concubined. Yes, I said concubined. Anyway, so I'm going to try this on and see if it fits me and we'll see if one day I end up wearing it. <sighs> so that was the last of the pieces, guys. If you have anything like this that you've got from a family member or someone special in your life, please do tell me below in the comments. I would really love to hear where your special vintage pieces have come from and the story behind them. I think that would be really cool and I'm sure other people can relate. So let's have a little chat down in the comments about that. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe and comment. Come and follow me on my Instagram. Join us in the Vintage Tips and Tricks Facebook group. We would love to have you and I will see you in the next video. Bye.